Hello and welcome at our GCP Mindset Channel. Last time we spoke already with Jan Elsen about his startup company, a medical device company called Skinovita. Today we speak about phototherapy with him. Thanks for being here. Yes, great to be here. Hi, Jan. Thank you very much for being here to uh, speak with me about phototherapy. Last time we spoke about your startup company, Skinovita, and your company is a medical device company which wants to treat uh, skin diseases. And you told us that you suffered from a chronic skin disease. Could you explain a little bit more what kind of skin disease you, you're suffering from and how you treat it? Yes, I mean, being a patient myself is the core driver why I started this business in order to help other people. Um, me, myself, I have a psoriasis. It's a chronic uh, skin disease. It's connected to the immune system. Um, there are a lot of different therapy options, and it's very similar to other chronic skin diseases like atopic dermatitis, but also like uh, vitiligo. Um, yeah, looking at the therapy um, regimes, we have topical creams, which are basically uh, creams and ointments you can use for therapy. We have phototherapy, um, which is basically um, radiation with a light spectrum. And then we have system therapy, which is basically a way of suppressing the immune system, which is the cause for this disease. Um, often the problem is that the accessibility to those treatments is not really there. This is our mission to provide that with digital technology. When we speak about chronic skin diseases, it means you have it forever. You, you treat actually the symptoms, not the disease itself, correct? Yes, absolutely. So um, most of these diseases are genetic. So um, you can only treat the symptoms. However, it can very well happen that you're symptom free for various years or decades. Um, that doesn't mean that you're healed, but um, yeah, I mean, from my life quality, It feels like being healed uh, when the symptoms are not there because this is really the burden I have. But in fact, uh, no, there is uh, currently um, no healing for any of those diseases. Could you also summarize a little bit for us the advantages and disadvantages of the different treatment ways? Yes, sure. Um, well, first of all, I have to say I'm not a dermatologist and any dermatologist could give you a better response, but I'm a patient and so I have some experience myself. Um, what are the benefits and the the... the, the Yeah, the cons. Well, um, it depends all on the severity. Um, I mean, the big benefit of most topical treatments is that you can use them localized. Um, that's a big benefit. And usually they come along with not so strong side effects. However, when it comes to cortisol, you have to be very careful. But this is usually the entry level of uh, skin therapy for those chronic inflammatory diseases. Um, for phototherapy, we have also the benefit it can be localized. So depending which body part you irradiate, there are different therapy devices on the market. Um, it's quite effective, but you have one core problem, and that's the high time effort. So here we're speaking about for psoriasis. It's about 28 sessions on average. Um, you need about three to six per week based on the, di uh, on the guideline. And that's very hard to integrate in daily life, especially if you look at the opening hours of treatment centers. And That's the core downside of phototherapy. And then you have system therapy. There's two different groups. You have conventional system therapy, which is the classic way of immune suppression. Um, so um, this approach is not so much on, on uh, yeah, treating the disease from the outside, but from the inside. It's an immune disease. You can suppress certain levels of the immune system. It has the benefit uh, if it's effective. It's effective everywhere. You don't need to cream like every different kind of body part which you have. That's also why it's usually used for more severe symptoms. Um, but of course, it has passive effects that when you suppress certain parts of your immune system that you're more vulnerable towards infections, etc. There's a different variation of the system therapy. Um, these are the modern biologicals, which are a lot more effective and um, basically are organically produced inhibitors of antibodies. And they are a lot more targeted Another benefit is that all these system therapies, that they can also address other symptoms, which might occur, for instance, joint pain. Um, so this is the big difference. Biologicals are usually um, injected, so anyone who is afraid of needles might have some, <laughs> some, some yeah, free recourses, or I don't know how to say this in English, um, some peers there, but um, every of these therapy systems has its justification and it's pretty much depends on the severity 
and the individual needs of the patient. Yeah. But I think it's also a, a matter of money again, isn't it? So the treatments are different costly for the patient. Well, for the healthcare system. Definitely. So it really depends on the healthcare system. So here in Germany, as a patient, usually I don't even know what my medication costs, yeah. which is good for me because I, I have a certain range and whatever my dermatologist is willing to prescribe, um, usually I can take it. However, there are very big differences in the costs. So um, usually those topical treatments, they're quite cheap. Phototherapy, it really depends. There are different variations. You can do it with certain baths. But then it's like 1,500 euros over the course of uh, the therapy cycle. Or just radiation, then it's like 300 euros the insurance pays. Um, when it goes to system therapy, that's really expensive. Um, so, yeah, actually, if you look at the top 10 best-selling um, drugs in the world, uh, most of them are those biologics. Um, for instance, Humira, which is the best-selling uh, drug for many years uh, worldwide, the costs are there pretty high, even though the patent protection went away. So I think in Germany with Humira, we are currently around 16,000 euros per year per patient. And that's, of course, a significant burden for our healthcare system. Okay, yeah, I understand. Yeah, but on the other side, phototherapy, you, you say it's much cheaper, it costs time. Uh, but for me, it also sounds a little bit like a herbal medicine, Yeah, just using the sun for treatment. Could you explain how it really works? How do you use radiation to treat a patient? It's very interesting because there's different names for phototherapy. There's also some people call it light therapy, and that sounds even more esoteric. <laughs> But in fact, it's uh, since many, many years or decades, it's, it's the core element of dermatological treatments. Um, the core effect is, is, is uh, rooted, as you say, in, in, in sunlight. Uh, Most people with uh, chronic skin disease might have noticed that their disease gets a lot better when it's exposed to sun or gets worse when it's not exposed to sun, for instance, in the dark winter months. Now, we know that sun or UV radiation has positive effects, but also negative effects. It can lead to um, skin aging and also to skin cancer if you're exposed too much. Um, phototherapy is basically working with this principle and doesn't take the full light spectrum the sun has, but um, there have been multiple studies which analyze which wavelength leads to the positive skin effects and which wavelengths are more, you know, more dangerous. So phototherapy is usually narrow than UV light. For psoriasis, my disease is 311 nanometers, so you have a very thin wavelength. And as you can imagine, sunlight, just like sound, it's waves. And the higher the frequency, the, the, the shorter the waves, the faster they are absorbed. So with this 311 nanometers, it's ensured that the right layer of the skin is addressed, which then hinders the inflammation which is happening in there. Yeah, cool. So, but uh, my understanding is also the, the, the dose makes a poison. It's also when you use too much light, it's, it can also cause uh, skin cancer, for example. So when it comes to skin cancer and narrowband phototherapy, actually, when you look at the clinical data, it's It's not quite clear, but of course it is very logical when broadband UV light leads to potential risk of skin cancer, which is definitely there. Um, also an overdosis with narrowband UV light will have an impact, definitely. And that's why the whole doses management is extremely important. And every person is different. Everyone has a different skin. Then also it depends when do you do the radiation sessions, how much time is in between, what is your profession? Do you work night shifts? Do you work outside? There's a lot to be taken into consideration to have a very individualized and effective therapy plan. Okay, when you tell us um, phototherapy is actually not new, uh, why did you develop a new product using phototherapy? So what is new in your product? What's better? Yes, uh, we're uh, developing innovation in the area of phototherapy, a therapy which is in fact not new uh, since many decades it's in application. But still, there's a lot of room for improvement thanks to digital technology. As I said earlier, phototherapy is a very effective treatment, but it comes along with a very big burden, which is mostly related to the time which is needed. Imagine if you have to take care of kids, if you live in a rural area, or if you have a full-time job, how would it be possible to integrate four sessions per week during the opening hours of the therapy center? So the core problem of this therapy is, is the accessibility. And our mission is to improve this accessibility by making a treatment accessible from home, 
but in a safe and medically supervised manner. We do that by connecting therapy devices with the therapy app we have. This allows us to directly transfer the dosage to the therapy device, because if the patient would need to put the dosage themselves, there is certain risk of putting a too high dosage by accident, maybe even on purpose if you're not satisfied with how fast the therapy is progressing, there is certain um, risk of that. Um, the other thing is it's very important to supervise this treatment and especially to see how the skin reacts. And for that, of course, the dermatologists need to see how the skin looks after the treatment. For this, we have this app connected with a digital therapy monitor for dermatologists. So after each session, one day later, you take a photo how the skin reacted. And this enables the dermatologist to see um, how the skin reacting at the same time to adapt the dosage plan when needed. Very interesting then also will be the next step of development where we will have algorithms which calculate the probability of a potential side effect even before it occurs. This is the potential of making the treatment more safe, but in the long term also more efficient. Okay, sounds very positive, of course. In our clinical research world, we speak always about a uh, risk-benefit profile and it should be positive, of course. Um, but we didn't speak about any risk yet. Um, are there risks in your new therapy or way of uh, providing the therapy? Yes, thank you very much for this great question. Yes, of course, and there's a lot of risk to be aware of, and this is also part of our development. The core difference to the status quo is that patients do the therapy independent at home. This leads to a lot of freedom, but at the same time, you have the risk that things might not go well. This is the big difference to the status quo, where it's usually these therapy devices are um, used by the nurse, so they put in the dosage. And that's why we anal analyzed what could go wrong in the home therapy setting. One thing is currently those therapy devices have a manual dosage input where we realize, okay, this is not safe. The patient needs to put in the time, the risk of putting in a wrong time is too high. Or a patient might have the idea to do two or three therapy sessions in one day instead of one. Or what happens when one another person in the household decides to use this lamp, for instance, a kid which wants to play and is happy about this, this blue light which is shining there. Um, so these are a lot of risks we took into consideration. And basically, Skinovita is all about risk mitigation measures for whole therapy. Up to a level where the additional freedom for the patients outweighs by far the risk that can happen. And for us, the solution was, for instance, in this area of dosage control, that we need an automatic dosage transfer so that the patient cannot put any wrong dosage. That was a very big risk mitigation. The other thing is personal identification. It's all in the app. We know in smartphones, we can identify ourselves with various ways, old school way with password, um, new school way with face ID or fingerprint. So like this, we can ensure that the therapy device can only be used by the right person. And also after a session, this device is locked for 22 hours so that no additional therapies can be done. So these are the first risk mitigation measures we had there. The other risk is that the dosage plan, which was prescribed by the dermatologist, is maybe not ideal. Every skin reacts a bit differently. So um, therefore, it's very important that the dermatologist is able to supervise the progress. Currently, when you look at the doctor's offices, it's mostly done with paper and pen. And um, of course, when paper and pen documentation is done at home, no one would be able to, to look at the treatment plan. This is why we have this interface between dermatologists and patient to ensure that the therapy plan is not only created once, but also continuously adapted to the individual skin response. That's the other risk mitigation. So these are the core things we need to address. The remaining risks are rather low, but still um, the biggest challenge we have is that our design in the app and step by step, we lead the patients through the execution. Important thing, for instance, is that patients use safety glasses to protect their eyes, that they have the right distance to the device, that they're alone in the room, that all this is incorporated in the design process and also the steps how the patient is guided to get there. And there it's very important that we not just assume it needs to be like this and therefore it is safe, but we test. We test a lot uh, the usability. Um, when we do these tests, we do it with normal lamps because, I mean, we don't want to radiate anyone who doesn't have this disease. And also in early product development stages, this doesn't really, <laughs> isn't really ethical. The good thing is by now we reached a technical maturities where all these traditional tests all show very positive results that we think now it is time for a clinical trial. 
where we clinically evaluate it, and the co our goal is to evaluate this risk-benefit ratio. We are very convinced, but that's, uh, in the end, also the the yeah the study results will speak for themselves. And this is very important also for us to bring this product with a good feeling to the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according to what I understood is we don't speak about real risk of the device, but more the residual risk um, of the, the patients themselves. Yeah, If they use it correctly, if they give it to their kids, for example, uh, whatever. And that that's probably the hardest uh, job to show that it's still acceptable to have it at home. Yeah. Okay. Um, it sounds all very positive, optimistic. Um, the patients probably are waiting already for the products. Uh, I, at least I can imagine. What do you think? How long will you need until it's also accepted by the healthcare insurances um, so that the patients really can profit from your cool product? Mm -hmm. Well, it always depends also a bit on the bureaucracy we have here in Germany. Um, and also the speed of the clinical trial. So we have three study centers. We are very happy about that. They will recruit the patients. We will have 30 patients who will have uh, the option to participate in the study. They will be able to do that already in, in two months, if we're good, with the ethics committee and the B farm approval. This is part of the certification process. So all the other patients will need to wait until we have it certified as a medical product. We're looking forward to have it done by the end of this year, but it depends once again on the study progress and at the same time also the document check um, by the notified body because this is the final step we need for the certification. Okay, so but beginning of next year should be realistic to that patients could be treated at home. I think so, yeah. Okay, everything sounds very positive. Um, according to my understanding, patients only can uh, benefit from your new medical device um, and a lot of new patients will also receive a treatment who would not go to a medical doctor for treatments. Um, could you just give us a little bit more summarize what reflects your vision, what is the vision also for the next future or the long-term future in terms of phototherapy supported by Skinovital? Yeah, um, it's the overall philosophy we have that personal living conditions should not have an impact on the accessibility of treatments. This is what it's all about. And um, we see ourselves as an addition to the existing care, which is there. Every patient who can already have a phototherapy at the dermatologist next door, it's, it's great. It's really good. But we also want to cover those patients who cannot, who live in a village, who are pregnant and cannot drive four times a week back and forth. And this is really our mission. And also in the future, we want to foster this, not only in the area of phototherapy, but also in other disease areas. And um, the very, for example, um, well, still in the dermatology area, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's still, you know, phototherapy is one, it's basically the, the middle part of the treatment options. And there are a lot of solutions in the digital area which uh, on the digital uh, world, which we can use also to improve effectiveness and individualized medication for system therapy or individualized topical treatments. So this is where we see the future. And um, with the same philosophy, working with the care, which is already there, working very closely together with the dermatologist and filling the gaps which are there to complement the existing care. A lot of patients will benefit from phototherapy developed by Skinovida. That's extremely cool and and a uh, really meaningful product yeah thank you very much um i i think so too and um yeah our core driver is to help people and improve life quality this is why we do this we're very happy for all the support we get from all sides and everyone is welcome to shape this from existing players to new players who want to shape this with us insurances uh, regulatory authorities clinical research we need to work all together to improve care and there's so much potential and thank you very much for have given me the opportunity to uh, present a bit what we do. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much for sharing the information and all your experience with us. I also hope that you liked our video. Yeah. Leave your comments, your questions and take care. See you the next time. Bye-bye.